Bricks and mortar based franchise real estate companies are on the way out. And that's not my opinion. That is a fact if you look at the data and where things are trending. And so what I'm gonna do in this video is I'm gonna share some insight into the history of real estate brokerage, what's happening in our industry today, and the importance of having an agent-centric company in the midst of all of it. And it's my hope that in watching this video that you would be better informed and prepared for the future moving forward in the industry. And if you're new to the channel, my name is Tyler Roycke. I help people build income and wealth in real estate, and I run an international real estate team at eXp Realty. If you get any value whatsoever out of this video, all I'd ask is that you like, comment, and hit that subscribe button so that I can continue to share more tips and resources with you in the time ahead. And with that being said, let's dive into the video. And so up to this point, to really understand what's happening, it's good to know what the history is of our industry here. So to pinpoint a few key milestones that happened along the way, going back a hundred plus years, there was this company came along called Coldwell Banker, founded by Coldwell and Banker, hence the name. But they created and pioneered what we now know as the franchise real estate brokerage model. And so they offered a split to the agents, meaning that you could come and work for them as a real estate agent and you would split your commission with the brokerage. And that's how that worked over a very long period of time until another company came along called Century 21. And they had sleeker and more modern branding. They had better splits and had more of an opportunity to offer the agents and they built a sizable real estate company off of that model. And along the way, there was another company that came along called Remax. And not only did they have a different kind of branding with the balloon and whatnot, but they had a much higher split. In fact, you could actually just pay a flat monthly fee to operate your real estate business there. And so some agents opted for that. They preferred to pay more of a flat fee than a bigger kind of split to close the deals. And you know, they built a whole company and brand around that model as well. And then in the 1980s, Keller Williams comes along and they had a split and cap. And so they pioneered the cap where, hey, your commission will cap off once you've paid in a certain split to the brokerage throughout the year. And in 1986, they had an innovation called profit share as a way to create more of an opportunity financially for the top producing agents and anyone that was really helping to build that company. And so that was a, a model that worked to really create a substantial amount of growth in the years that followed with KW. And all four of those big brands I mentioned, they're all legacy franchise brokerage names. They're all bricks and mortar based and they have thrived in the past 100 years in the industry. And along the way, just side note, of course there's a lot of other companies out there, plenty of other franchises, and there's also so-called 100% brokerages. And there's a tendency for 100% brokerages to thrive in trending markets and to kind of drop off in downturns. And so that's a cyclical thing, meaning there's brokers out there that will give agents an opportunity to minimize their costs to actually close deals. But the trade off there is you don't have a big brand name behind you. You don't have as much in the way of economies of scale working for you in the way of support and resources and training and all that good stuff. But then also you don't really get as much value typically, but those will work when the market's hot enough. And when it's not, a lot of them end up dropping off in the process. But what I wanna talk about now is like, the rise of cloud-based companies, because that's where the trend is. If you look at the data, I follow a analyst, uh, you know, who really studies our industry. His name's Mike Del Prete, and he does studies that he publishes very frequently. And I like to look at the data, because I mean, at the end of the day, a lot of people say a lot of things. Women lie, men lie. Numbers don't lie, but it's up for you to interpret what they actually mean. But the numbers I look at is, hey, what direction is 
the agent count and more importantly the production trending in our industry and you see a very strong trend away from bricks and mortar names across the board the big legacy franchises and towards these new cloud-based companies which that's something that's a phenomenon of you know really the past decade and especially more recent years where that's really been a huge movement what these cloud-based companies do is they create a different kind of experience for the consumer which in the realm of real estate brokers we the agent are the consumer because the brokerage is there to support and serve us but they're able to provide those things at a lower cost why because they're cutting out the bricks and mortar and also if it's not a franchise they're cutting out some of that ownership dynamic where a lot of the financial resources end up going so significantly lower overhead and if they're able to provide a support sooner in real time and to streamline the process that can actually create a lot of time savings for the agents but here's the key thing like what can a company do if they lower the operating costs significantly well they could use those financial resources to do more for the agents and i say could because i can't speak for every single company out there but if you had more money on the table that wasn't needed to operate that's potentially more that you could reinvest into providing the service that you do franchise models cannot compete with that because they're top heavy and they have substantially more overhead so they have to pay that overhead before they do anything and a lot of them obviously have built a big name for themselves over the course of time with what they have been able to provide making those numbers work but as numbers decline it's going to become more challenging for them to provide the same amount of value they have in times past for the agents let alone more value to be able to compete with these new models because there's no way that they can change that cost structure without entirely changing their business model and for most of these companies that wouldn't even really work because they have franchise owners bought into it and they can't really change that structure in the flip of a light switch it's kind of already solidified that that's how it works and so there's no other way to slice it what it all boils down to is this the agents pay for all that overhead that it costs to operate with that big brand name and their local market center whether they use it or not and they have less to show for it in the process and so here's the thing with all these cloud-based companies because there's a lot of them but I cannot emphasize enough look at how agent centric is the company because I firmly believe it's important to have a agent centric company in the midst of all this because as technology evolves there is a concern of real estate agents being replaced by technology this is something that I know a lot of people have a thought about and for some people it's a bigger concern than others I personally believe in the value that real estate agents bring to the table in navigating the transaction. But there's a lot of real estate tech companies that are more so centered around maximizing profit for the shareholders and the owners that they don't particularly care how they do that, whether it's agent centric or not. And so you've got a lot of big names in the industry emerging right now. Like what are they? Well, think of all these companies, even some of them you don't really think of as a brokerage, but they're spending a lot of money to advertise direct to consumer and they're making home sales happen. So like think of Open Door, OfferPad, Redfin, Zillow, and how that all relates to this industry here but imagine what would happen if there were companies that became dominant that didn't really need the agent and didn't really have the same place and opportunity for them you know would they seize that opportunity well if the company's purpose is to maximize the value for shareholders and the owners that probably would be the direction that things would go most cloud-based real estate companies are not agent centric and i say that because show me what the opportunity is for an agent in a lot of instances it's not even as big of an opportunity as a lot of the traditional franchise legacy brands because there's companies out there they just need agents as employees they need them to facilitate a small aspect of the transaction and they're getting paid in proportion to the smaller amount they're servicing so if i look at the playing field of our industry today i would tell you this like exp realty or not it is the company that is on not only the forefront of this cloud-based movement but it's also the company that is truly centered around the agent in a way that I don't see anyone else in the industry doing, which, you know, that's very significant because as change happens technologically, who is going to be an advocate for the agent? Who is going to provide the agent the most in the way of opportunity? And who is going to position the agent to remain relevant as technology changes 
and advances in our industry because eXp as a company is set up to be agent centric in every single aspect, including who actually gets to share in the ownership upside and also who gets to share in the actual company's revenue, which if I look at any other company out there, they're not agent centric in that same sense. They're owner centric when it comes down to that. And it's typically not the agents that get to share in that ownership upside. When I say that too, I'm talking about like if an agent is productive at eXp, they're gonna share in that upside. If they're closing deals, if they're building their business, like it or not, they're gonna share in that ownership upside. And so I don't see that happening in the same way at other places in our industry. And so as conditions change in our industry, eXp as a company is financially strong to be at the center of it all. So like eXp or not, I firmly do believe that it's important that there is a company like eXp in the midst of this movement and really on the forefront of it, which that's what eXp is in our industry today. So while over the course of time, there's been a lot of great companies that have done a lot of great things in the industry. I mean, shout out to the big legacy franchise names because they all have their place in history in building and improving upon what the opportunity looks like in the industry today. But at this point in time, eXp Realty is the company that is on the forefront of what is progressing and what you know where our industry is going from this point onward. There may come a time where another great big brand name emerges, but at this time, eXp is that company and i hope that you found that insightful and like honestly this was not to tell you hey exp is the place you gotta be really the purpose of this video was to really break down the trends and i mean you look at the data and see it for yourself but you know if you really look at th how things are trending the cloud-based companies are on the way in the traditional franchise big brand names are on the way out and you know a lot of them have such a big brand and presence that you know they really have a stronghold in, in their market and what they've built and they probably will have some significant staying power at least as long as bricks and mortar brokerages are a thing which honestly i don't see them going away you know the big established companies are probably going to find a way to continue to do business at least with good owners and operators in the mix but you know as far as where they're going i, I believe they've had their prime and i believe that you'll continue to see companies like exp grow and thrive and others come along who implement the cloud-based model like what exp has actually pioneered here but all that being said i started my real estate career at a big name franchise brand along the way i learned more about the new model the cloud-based one and today i operate my real estate business at exp and it wasn't a recent thing i'm actually coming up on my seventh year at this company and so if you are actually curious to learn more if you're in the real estate business today or soon to be in the industry maybe you've been in it a few years regardless if you'd like some more insight firsthand on what that looks like if you'd like to learn more from me about how i'm maximizing the opportunity with this new business model in our industry i'd love to connect more and see how I could potentially help and be a resource for you. So if that would be helpful, go ahead and do this. Send me an email, you'll find that in the description below along with some other helpful resources for you. And with that being said, thank you so much for watching the video. Make sure you are subscribed so that you can see what else I have in store to share in the time ahead. I'm gonna to continue to share resources and value and hopefully something that's gonna help you sell more real estate, build your business, and ultimately a life you can look forward to in real estate. But that being said, thank you again for watching. And until next time, I'll look forward to seeing you on the next video.